It's been months of people talking about the Canadian housing market collapsing. And where is it? Is it in the horizon? Is it coming? Is the pending doom right now here? Well, we're going to talk about that right now. What's going on, everybody? My name is Andrew. And today I'm going to tell you guys my opinion on whether or not the Canadian real estate market is due for a collapse. Now, all the top news is always saying how collapse is imminent. You know, real estate market is going crazy. Prices are going high. Prices are dropping. Interest rates are rising. Inflation is coming about. And everything is just pointing towards an imminent recession leading to economic collapse. So is this going to happen? And as of July 12th, Bank of Canada increased interest rates again by 0.5%, bringing us up to a benchmark high of 5% interest, which is the highest has been in over 20 years and this brings a lot of fear into the market people are wondering if interest rates are going to continue to rise incrementally and whether or not they're going to be able to afford homes if the interest rates do continue the way they're going but now let's get back to the video and we're seeing a lot of conflicting data because if you are a home buyer or you are a real estate investor it may be difficult to assess as to whether or not now is a good time to jump into the market because although we know that interest rates are rising and inflation is rising we also see articles indicating that real estate home prices recently went up by about 25 percent in places like Toronto. Whereas on the other hand, you see articles talking about how mortgage sales are down and why is all this happening? Now, there are really only two types of people watching what's happening to the market with two different trains of thought. One is the people who think that the market is going to go down, that it's going to collapse and that something's going to happen. And all these stress factors are really just going to send the market tumbling down. And maybe that is when people are going to jump in to capitalize on certain opportunities. And then there are the other people who think they see something a little bit different. Resistance that isn't going to be able to be contained and that all the other factors are still still going to press the real estate economy upwards. So how do we make heads or tails of all these factors? Well, the common and generally accurate thought process is that when interest rates are rising, it should put home prices down a little bit or at least stop them from growing. And rising inflation rates got to mean that a recession is in the horizon. But if we start to look at this on a global level of other comparable countries to Canada, we start to see that other places are having some relatively similar problems. And there's a few factors contributing to why they're having such problems. Places like Australia, the UK, the US are having certain inventory issues and although things are fluctuating in the economy people are still buying whatever is available to them now some of the factors that are contributing to what's happening in the economy right now are things like immigration increased financial planning rigidity by households as a result of the pandemic and also the working situations that have changed people's financial circumstances where now people are able to work remotely and they don't necessarily need to be moving around as much now, that's just one factor playing into the equation but if you look at other things that are coming in where people talk about how we're not building enough housing the main thing that's actually holding builders and developers back from building new houses, it's actually largely the bureaucracy behind it. But the game by which these builders and developers have to jump through all these hoops in order to build new houses, it's holding the whole process back and it costs a lot of money. Now, when I say we're going to look at this on a global scale, what does this mean when we're looking at people from other countries that may be in a higher social economic position that they can come to Canada? Well, the remote work opportunities actually makes it so that when people are in other countries and they've been on the fence about wanting to come to Canada or the US, if they have an opportunity to work remotely, they are now able to work remotely and move to Canada while still maintaining whatever status job that was back home. And this is all great to consider on a global scale, but are there any local domestic factors that are contributing to increased stability of households and also less transactions in the real estate economy, maintaining low inventory? Because people before used to live on up, you know, they used to get some equity in their property, they used to refinance the property or just sell the property, move on to a bigger, nicer house from new construction, and then new immigrants may purchase those old homes. So the increase in the interest rates is actually putting people who are locked into lower interest rates hold steady. They're not refinancing. They're not selling their home and moving to another one if they don't need to. People are making concessions. And a lot of articles have shown how households in Canada have been shown to have adopted a more rigid financial position when it comes to how they save, not going as many vacations, and just to being a little more financially responsible so that they have savings and funds for a rainy day. So what do all these factors mean to you? Because that is what you need to consider here. If you are somebody who's looking to get into the real estate market either as a real estate investor or as a home buyer for a place that you want to live in how do you make a decision i think you should always make the leap to get into the real estate market as opposed to waiting for timing in my opinion it is never a matter of when should you get in is it the type of product and the what price point one such thing is to make sure you hedge your down payment don't be always buying at the maximum of what you can afford but people ask the question all the time should i be putting five percent down ten percent down or twenty percent down on a down payment 
dreamed of a home. If you're gonna stick around at that property for five years or more, put the minimum down that you can. And the reason is because it leaves more money in your pocket so that if you have anything to contend with, you have a financial reserve that you can use to deal with problems as they come up. It's this uncertainty in people's minds where you have the news article and everybody talking about all the fear that's happening, whereas you have the conflicting data talking about how everything is still rising and getting out of control and you're wondering what should you do. This uncertainty is what makes opportunity available to you for you to capitalize on. The question you ought to be asking is where are you on this scale? Are you on the fearful or are you on the brave side? And how are you conducting yourself in today's time? So that's all we have for you today. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and I will see you on the next one.